Hey guys, welcome to Starting Out Solitary. I'm your Thursday host, Michelle, and this week's topic is Spell and Ritual Creation. So this week we are talking about creating spells and rituals and how we do it. Now, the first thing, of course, when you're creating a spell is what is the purpose? What's your, what outcome are you looking for? And, um, you know, what's your intention behind it? I always start off by thinking, what can I do mundanely, obviously, to, you know, get to my goal or, you know, remedy whatever situation it is or whatever I'm trying to get or I'm trying to push away, whatever the case may be, I try to, you know, of course, exhaust all mundane efforts. Now, sometimes, of course, I'll do spells to enhance mundane efforts, and then sometimes people will do spells because all their mundane efforts have, you know, run dry and they need a little extra help. So once you've decided, okay, this is what I want, and for the sake of this video, we'll use, what can I use as an example? Um, money, that's the big one. Money and healing, protection, all those are big ones, but I'll use money as an example, just for this video. So say I need money, don't we all? Um, I've exhausted all my efforts mundanely to obtain said money, and I need a little help magically to, to do so. So, I will always go check my Book of Shadows, or, you know, Grimoire, whatever you call it, whatever you keep, journal, notebook, to see if I've done a money spell that's similar to what, you know, the goal I'm trying to reach currently, to see if I've done a, a spell similar that's worked in the past. And of course, if I have, then I will use that one and probably, um, you know, alter it a little bit or tweak it a little bit. But if it's a goal or something that I haven't yet done a spell for, or maybe I have and the spell didn't work or didn't you know work out quite the way I wanted it to, I go online and look for spells. Now I don't use them straight off the internet or straight out of a book. I'll look through books. Um, I'll go online and search. Um, and I'll look for some kind of general outline just a general gist of what I'm looking for and I usually have something in mind like you know for our example money I will decide you know what kind of spell I want to do do I want to do like <clears throat> you know like a mojo bag do I want to do just you know candle magic do I want to do like a jar spell or bottle spell do I want to do you know there's a whole different kinds of things and I'll think of what do I have on hand, what do I have available to me to do a spell with, and, you know, how do I want it to go. So, for instance, I've done Money Jar before, and it didn't work out exactly the way I had hoped, but it, it seemed to work in general. Um, so, if I'm going to uh, look through the internet, look through books, etc., for a general outline, I will get my general outline or find one that I like or find one that suits me or, or calls to me or just, you know, sounds like something I want to try. And then I will tweak it to fit me and, um, you know, what I have on hand. You know, if it calls for a certain herb that I don't have, I will look at the spell and say, okay, why are they adding this herb? What are the... Uh, you know, what correspondence does this represent? And then I will look through my uh, witchy cabinet or my inventory, <clears throat> excuse me, and see what I have that also represents that or that is similar to that representation. Because nine times out of ten, I don't have everything, you know, out of the book, off the internet spells call for, and quite frankly, I'm not going to follow it to the T anyway, so it's fine. So once I have decided what changes I'm going to make, I will rewrite it uh, to suit me. If it calls for a green candle, I might also add 
you know, an orange candle for, you know, attraction. I might also add in a, some, a black candle for, you know, to dispel ne any negativity that might, you know, attach itself to the spell. Um, or if the money that I'm looking for is, uh, corresponds to like new beginnings, I might use some, a yellow candle or something yellow in the spell. So I'll, I'll tweak it and I'll add in things that I just, I, you know, feel right to me. I don't ever think, I really don't think people should ever use spells exactly out of books or exactly off the internet or whatever, wherever they find them. I think you should always add a little bit of a personal touch to it, whether it be big or small. Anyways, I will go through and see what the spell calls for, make the substitutions I need to make, and then I will look at what I have and see what can I add to this that might help it. So I'll add to it if I, you know, am able, if I have the resources at hand, and then I will look at the execution of the spell and see if that's something I like. If not, I will also alter that to fit, you know, how I'm feeling, what I, what I like, you know, whatever calls to me, I'll alter it. You don't, I mean, some, I've heard some people, some newer um, people in the craft talk about, you know, they're scared if they don't follow the spell exactly right, that it's not going to work, but my belief is, it, as long as you believe it will work, you have to believe it's going to work. As long as you believe it will work, <laughs> and, um, you know, you put your intentions out there, it'll work for you. That's just my opinion. Um, but you have to believe it's going to work. You can't doubt yourself just because you don't have nutmeg or something, you know, like I, it just ridiculous. So that's another thing. Don't, if you don't have all the ingredients the spell calls for it, I wouldn't worry about it. I would look at that ingredient, look at what it represents and then look into your inventory and see if you have something similar or something that represents the same qualities that you can just substitute it for. And the same thing with candles. Like if I don't have a certain color candle, I'll just use white. Or I will, you know, I've also in the past I've used crowns to actually color the outside of white candles. So, or I will, you know, melt down a, uh, like a tea light candle, like a white tea light, and you know, melt it on a little like uh, coffee cup warmer. You can use those to melt them down. I or in, even in a little pan, like on low. I'll melt it down really quick. Add a few slivers of whatever color crayon I need, and let it you know cool off. And there I have my color candle that I need. It's really cheap and easy, and you know, you find ways around things. So once you've decided your ingredients and you've um, decided on the execution of it and all that's left is your intention and you know to perform the spell and that's how I pretty much you know create my spell work is find a template alter it to fit my needs um, make substitutions make additions maybe subtractions and I'm good to go and the rhyming thing that we talked about earlier in the week, I think uh, Tara mentioned it and Wisps also mentioned it. I don't rhyme when it comes to like spell work, but in rituals, I don't exactly rhyme. Like it doesn't sound like whimsical rhyming, but I try to keep the, you know, the vocabulary flowing to where it's just, an, it just sounds right together. And most of the time it, the words either sound similar or they rhyme just so it flows better and feels more comfortable and just it just ends up that way I don't purposely like kill myself trying to find rhyming words but um, with spells the actual words of power I use are they don't rhyme but if I'm chanting something if I have a chant or a mantra or something I'm saying during the spell that usually rhymes it's usually you know a set of a couple words to, that rhyme together and but anyways I'm getting off track here it's not something that has to be perfect it doesn't have to sound perfect it doesn't have to rhyme if you're doing it to honor something or someone just the the feeling in your heart alone of, of the honor and and you know anything you say coming from that feeling will be right in my opinion I don't necessarily speak out loud Everything I say 
so to speak, is in my head. I don't speak out loud very often. It's a very private thing, like I said to me, and it's, you know, who needs to hear me is going to hear me whether I speak out loud or in my mind. Uh, I just find it more comfortable to me to just do everything internally. Uh, but even if I'm silent, there's, you know, the wheels are turning up there, man. There, things are going on, you know. So, I don't know if this was helpful in how I create my spells and rituals. Um, I do a lot more spell work than I do ritual work. I don't, I don't do many big rituals. Um, and sometimes I will do a ritual just out of the blue, on the fly, like... I'll just, something will come over me or I'll get a feeling and I'll just go with it and just do whatever I'm called to do. And that's another thing about, in my opinion, about spells and rituals is do some meditation prior. Do some divination work to see, you know, if you're not sure of how to do it or where to go or what your next step is, meditate on it. I do that a lot. I meditate on it. Um, I'll do some divination work to see, you know, to get some answers to questions I'm, I'm not sure about, or, you know, like, should I be doing this spell? Is this in my best interest? Um, is there something else I can do mundanely to help me along my way? You know, things like that. And I probably should have mentioned that in the beginning, but I do meditate before on, on my goal or on my spell before I do any kind of spell work. And to me, that's important, especially if you're not, you know, confident or not sure about, you know, what direction to take it. It's a good thing to do. So, anyways, I hope you guys found that helpful. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment box below. And as always, blessed be.